Hello, hello, welcome to Sutherland Handmade. My name is Patrick, I'm so glad you're here. I'm a sculptor and I'm currently learning how to do portrait sculptures better and better. These videos are part of that process. Today, we're making Bette Midler as Winifred Sanderson from Hocus Pocus. I made this on my live stream at twitch.tv slash Handmade. You can come join me there anytime, but for now, let's get to the sculpt. So I started off with my traditional bust layout where I've got a head and some shoulders. I lined in the initial shape and made a space for the eyes. It's all about measurements with the head, so I start measuring the face, building out the chin, working on some of the details, just trying to get it right. Build up the cheeks to match the profile, both from the front and from the side. And then scaled the nose to my reference images and then applied it to the face and began shaping it as well. We avoid the eyes in these projects until really late because we know that the eyes are very distracting. I add some nostrils underneath, trying to shape the nose properly. And then I add a little piece of clay for the palette of the mouth to give us lots of room to work for with her odd smile and her interesting teeth. Once I had the mouth in a position that I liked, I began trying to make the lips and just widen the mouth more and more in order to make room for teeth. While doing that, I continue to refine the nose, go back and forth between my various reference images and angles, trying to capture all sorts of accuracy. When I was ready, I started to work on those teeth just by using a very fine tip tool to run the various shapes into the mouth and under the lips. He has a very distinct mouth, which made it very easy to make. All right, it's time for us to work on those eyes. So we just widen and deepen the spots, then put in the tops of our eyeballs trying to shape them in properly so that they are in line with each other and accurate to the face. I sort of blended them in and tried to measure around, take a look to see if they are accurate. When I was happy, I began adding in the lower eyelid blending it into the rest of the face. Then added an upper lid as well. Each step in this process around the eye, we're just slowly but surely trying to imitate what we see in our reference. The last thing we do is we combine the eye and the, the ridge of the eyebrow together in the weird way that the human eye does it. We just work slowly but surely to try to make sure that the eyelids and the eyes, various places that they can enter the face, are accurate. And we do the same thing on the other side. At this point I was happy with what I had. I just needed to do some tiny details and then it was time to bake. Once it was baked, it was time for me to work on the hair. The hair is very large and big, so I wanted to make sure to bulk it out by using some aluminum foil. So I put some uh, oven safe adhesive on there, and then I made a shape of aluminum foil that I then covered with some clay and blended into the head. This is why it's great to bake your head at this stage. You lock in your face, and then you can work on the important details in and around the rest of the head. I 
When I was happy with the basic shape and following the hairline that I liked, it was time to begin working on those curls. This was a slow and steady process of rolling out ringlets and various shapes of clay and then building from the bottom up towards the top of the head, one strand at a time, slowly but surely, overlapping, making things work. Now this is a two-stage process where we lay out the curls of the hair, and once we've got enough of them, we begin to use our tools to do some work to detail how they lay out into each other. With enough strands around here, it was time to start working on the overlaps and the various things. This is generally a process of just pushing things underneath each other and trying to refine the various shapes that we've created through our unnatural process to make it look much more natural. We will do this all throughout the stages of the hair, and it just really helps to make sure that what we're doing doesn't just look like clay on top of clay, it's something else. And here we go, we just need a small ear for this because some of our hair will cover it up. So we make a little half ear and blend it into the face. When we're happy with it, we start building up the layers of our hair. Now we're working backwards from the front of the head, making sure to try to make different shapes and sizes and scales so that the hair looks organic and not identical in every sense of the word. Again, we come in and detail in the hair, making it look natural as possible. There we go, the side of the hair is basically ready. So we continue to build deeper and deeper layers of hair from there. We do the other side as well, and then start working our way up towards the middle of the back of the head where the hair would start going downward on the back of the head. And then we start working along the front, building long strands of hair to help represent the long strands, uh, her long hair being sort of brushed back. We just sort of place these a piece at a time, layering them a little bit so there's some that are on top of others. And of course, we'll come back and detail them again. Once everything's in, comes time for us to take a fine edge tool and add just some detail for the hair. This doesn't need to be a perfect process, we're just trying to make sure that the hair has some interesting texture to it so that it doesn't look like long, thick chunks of clay. Once the hair was done, it was time to work on her outfit. So we began by creating the upper part of her bodice, which we could then blend into the rest of the body. She has a very high collar that we needed to add as well. So we took a, a rectangle of clay, a little bit wider at the top and at the bottom, blended it into the back, and then sort of folded it along in order to get the pop collar look. Then we use thin strands of clay to make her jacket, make it appear as though her um, bodice underneath is being covered by a larger coat.
Once we were happy at this stage, we decided to draw in and lower part of her bodice so that we could add the purple strip in the middle where there would be strands of thread tying together. Add some snakes of clay to the shoulders in order to give some textural detail. Blended them in. Now it's time to add the string that tied together her bodice. So we just poked even holes along the front and then took thin strips of clay and used a tool to poke them into the hole, overlapping them one over the other, crisscrossed all the way down. And the last thing we needed to add was her necklace. So I built this piece by piece, adding the feature of the necklace in the middle, then each of the gems, followed by a connecting line of thin clay. And with that, the sculpting was done. It was time to paint, so I primed it and then got started working on my base colors. I used a flesh tone mixed with a little red and yellow to get a skin tone that looked accurate to the photos I was working with. Colored her hair a deep red to start so that I could layer in some extra colors in and around it. Painted her outfit green. And went about adding little details. In the eyes, the jewelry pop, and even doing some of the decorative patterns on her fabric make it look just right. Check out this quick time lapse of the work.
And with that, it's time for your final reveal. This marks the completion of Winifred Sanderson. Really love how this one turned out. I like the charm in her smile and the really vibrant hair that we were able to pull off. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to hit like and subscribe. It's always helpful to the channel. It helps me to know that people are out there watching. It helps me to know if you want to see more like this in the future. Let me know in the comments too what you think about it and what you would have done differently or what I could do to keep growing as a sculptor. We're all about having fun learning to sculpt here and so please do Join in the chat. Don't forget, I stream twitch.tv slash southernhandmade, 11.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Tuesday to Friday. And of course, you can find out more about my work and things that I sell at southernhandmade.com. And with that, there are tons of videos on this channel. You can watch my slow and steady progress as I've been learning how to do portrait sculptures. And you can check out my Pokemon that I do every Friday. And of course, until next time, keep being awesome.